Shalom, brothers and sisters. This Thursday thought I'm, I'm going to tell you for the rest of this year I'm I'm going to be skipping the series I've been working on on the various people the Lord has called to move the restoration forward after the death of Joseph Smith. I don't know how I'm going to be moving forward with that next year, but I feel impressed by the Spirit that there's some other things to talk about between now and then, and so I'd really like to wait. Maybe I'll do one once a month. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But for now, I had a conversation with Christine last night. And I feel impressed based on that conversation and my prayers this morning, trying to figure out what it was that I wanted to, the, the thought I wanted to share with you. What, what, what do I want to share? And what does the Lord want me to share? And I want to talk to you today about what I like to call the weirdness. I struggle with the reality of the strangeness that is Mormonism because I both love it and I also have a hard time trying to figure out how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people in a way that will help them understand and accept this weirdness. We are a religion that was founded by a man who put a rock in a hat to translate gold plates that nobody ever saw because they were covered by a cloth. So, yeah. We try today to recreate the past, to change it. But he was wearing these magical spectacles. Well, that was only for the 116 pages that we don't have. He poured through the gold plates, you know, and was able to translate them with these spectacles. He didn't pour through anything. Again, it was a rock and a hat, and his face buried in the hat. And now here I receive the five books of Moses, the book of Zenos, and it's a lot of weird stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is this is too weird for people. Is it any weirder than a guy putting a rock in a hat to translate? plates with a cloth over him sitting on a table next to him he's not even looking at or touching we are a weird religion we are a peculiar people and the thing that she and I discussed is I basically just need to get over myself and accept this fact and the reality is that if the Holy Spirit is converting people to the gospel of Jesus Christ then they're going to be okay with the weirdness. And if they're not, then the Lord will provide grace to help them be wherever it is that they need to be so that they can move forward in faith until they get to the point to where they're okay with the weirdness, whether that's in this life or the next. And to be honest, I love the weirdness. It's the thing that draws me to the Latter-day Saint movement. I feel that I I have a home here because the weird story of the Latter-day Saint movement is my weird story, my own journey. I can't imagine suddenly becoming a Protestant preacher and be like, yeah, I talk to God all the time. I write down revelations. No Protestant's going to accept that. No Catholic's going to accept that. Even if they may be Pope, I don't think anybody would accept that. And I can tell you that because here in the Latter-day Saint movement, people don't accept that. So if we can't accept the weirdness within our own culture, our own religion, our own movement, and it's not just me, there's lots of people who have the same kind of experiences out there, and, and we as a people generally don't seem to like those people. But the Lord still keeps bringing us weirdos to the forefront. He keeps preparing a way for us to share these messages. And so my Thursday thought for you today is in part me, I guess, kind of apologizing, me stating to you what I had to say to myself. I've got to get over myself. I have to get over my own insecurities. I've got to be okay with the weirdness that I love and not be afraid to let people know about the weirdness. Because other people that are a part of that weirdness, 
recognize it as the sacred journey that it is and still understand that it's going to be seen as weird by the world. And how can we bring in the people, gather the people that are having these sacred experiences, that are part of the sacred story that is the restoration of all things, not some things, all things. How can we gather these people up and bring them all together as part of an ecumenical movement? If we don't acknowledge the strangeness that is our movement. Now, I still do maintain that the Thursday thoughts are great for the theoretical, the, the oddities, the, the things that are, are sacred and we don't want mocked, and a place where we can discuss them safely. This would be, I guess, the meat, if you will. Whereas the Sabbath services, that's going to be the milk. But I think that we can and we should get on topic when talking about the milk. I think that we need to do a better job bridging the gap between Jesus died for us, we're saved by grace, and we're going to perform magical rituals, sacred rituals in our temples. We're going to be open about that. When we build our temple, the doors are going to be open. And anybody that wants to come in, as long as they're reverent, will be able to watch the temple endowments without having to go through them for themselves. So that if the Lord calls them to receive them, they will have a better understanding of what it is that they're about to do, what it is that they're about to partake of. And they'll be able to feel the sacred nature, the Holy Spirit there in the temple as these rituals are being performed. I believe that we as a people, as a fellowship, need to avoid the problem that I saw in the, the branch of our faith that I came from. There was, it was like when I went to the temple from the Salt Lake City Church for the very first time, I was like, who, who is this? Now keep in mind, I had studied extensively. I had read anti-Mormon literature. I read scriptures. I prayed and received revelation. I had a general idea of what was going to happen when I went through there. My, my biggest surprise, as I usually say, is that there was it was, it was a movie. I was not expecting a movie. I was expecting ritual work. And it, it was not done in the ritualistic fashion that I expected it to take place with the exception of the true order of prayer. We need to be careful not to set up the same trap in what we're building here in the fellowship. We can't put a dividing line between the priesthood the power of God and the people. That veil was rent at the death, death of Jesus Christ. The idea of the occult, which is nothing more than just the secret teachings, the secret chambers, those are gone. They're done away. We are not to have them anymore. And I'm not pointing fingers at those that do. I completely understand why the Salt Lake City Church does it in secret. I'm not going to get into that. And I respect our difference of opinion here. We need to be more open and inviting about our magical world views. And yes, I am using these weird words on purpose. I could very easily sugarcoat this and say miracle workings, which they are. Sacred rituals, which they are. But the moment any rational person sees them, they're going to say the same thing that everyone that's read Fourth Moses has said to me. This is Christian magic or this is Jewish magic. Because the reality is that as a part of the restoration of all things, we are restoring the ancient priesthoods. Both for the men and the women that existed until priestcraft removed them. 
we can't just say, well, we're going to do this part because it's socially acceptable. We have to understand that the things that the world sees as strange and odd and different are pleasing unto the Lord. That doesn't mean that everyone that's a part of the fellowship has to participate. We're not going to push anybody into or through anything. We don't even push people into baptism, for crying out loud. But it does mean that we need to be respectful and honest and open about the sacred things that we have been given as Latter-day Saints. How many people have gone through the Salt Lake City temples, the Salt Lake City Church's temple, I'm sorry, temples, plural, and when they got in there, they agreed to these covenants because they felt like they had to. You're given an opportunity to leave at the beginning before you know what's going on. How many people sat in there and silently said nothing when they were supposed to say yes and take covenants because they didn't want to embarrass themselves by leaving the situation and they didn't fully understand what they were doing. I've told you before, I felt impressed by the Spirit to every time they said anything about a covenant, I said, I vow to keep my baptismal covenants. I was fortunate in that I prayed before going in and I sought revelation from God on what to do. When our temples are built, when our tabernacle is built, when we are doing these rituals, I want everyone, and when I say I, I want to also say, and the Lord wants everyone to know what it is that we're doing. They can feel the sacred spirit before going through it. If there are questions, I don't want anyone to be or feel afraid to ask. So my Thursday thought for you this week is this. How do we bridge this gap? How do we bridge the divide between what people expect today from a traditional church versus what the Lord has asked us to do through all of the prophets, from Adam all the way until now, as a part of being a people of the temple, a people of the priesthood, a people called to work and perform miracles. How do we restore all things in a way that's pleasing to the Lord and doesn't push people away from the gospel of Jesus Christ and in fact helps them to recognize and understand that these rituals are a part of of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've talked about a lot of controversial things in these Thursday thoughts. I plan on talking about more and I want to invite you to talk about them. These Thursday thoughts don't all have to come from me. If the Lord feels you to call, feel if you feel the Lord is calling you to share a thought, send it to me. Call me. Let's talk about it. The restoration of all things comes from a prophetic people. And we're all called to be a prophetic people, not just me. So that's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.